to receive a million dollars a year, right? You go to these events, you get all fired up, you get all hyped up, but then you leave home and you don't do anything. You stop before you start. So it's like, why is that? So what we figured out is that when we change these mental beliefs that we have in our mind, that's when our business completely begins to change. And so like, you know, you guys can ask us any questions, man. We want to just serve you guys tonight. Uh, whatever you guys want to know, you know, we'll help you guys out. So is there any questions, any struggles, any bottlenecks in your business, uh, any beliefs that you guys have that you guys want to fix? We could take care of them right now in, in, in real speed. All right, here we go. You guys were on the uh, on uh, wholesale uh, disruptors, real estate disruptors, and yeah. you had 40 VAs at that time. Yeah. Um, what do you what do you have them doing? Like what are so most, most people in our company are co callers. We do heavy co call. Okay. We like to pound the vibration. We made our first million bucks off cold calling in this business, and we kind of stuck to it. You know, a lot of people, they teach, do five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different marketing channels. You know, we just found one thing. We stuck to that one thing until we became profitable, until we made our first money. Then we moved on to SMS, and then we moved on to, you know, other things like that. So, that, but but as far as 40, we don't have 40 VAs. Uh, <laughs> That's too many. Yeah, it's too many. That's way too many. <laughs> I don't want to manage all of them. Like, what does that mean? Like, we don't have no okay, 40 yeah. VAs. Yeah, we, but, got, you know, we, got, we got 25. But that number is always fluctuating because we're always hiring, hiring and, and we're always firing. Okay, and now, we nah, we don't got yeah. 40. But I'll tell y'all, look, here's where you guys want to start because, like, this is so huge. Like, most people don't make a million dollars in a year. First off, a million dollars in a year, I think it's $83,333 a month or something exactly. like that, right? So most people don't expect, because think about that. If you're making that, how much are your expenses, right? Our Amex bill last month was $60,000, $70,000, which is not a lot of money. Right now, at this point, but to somebody who's never made that type of money, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, that's so much money. It's a big shift. But at the end of the day, you got to you gotta get comfortable with that. So, like, if you're just used to making $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 a month, and you're trying to make ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty-five thousand dollars $35,000 a month, what do you think your expenses are going to be if you're making $35,000 a month? Go up. You can't be scared to spend $5,000 a month on marketing. Right. So, that's it's facts. not about all the information that you learn. Right, it's about changing the beliefs so that you can be okay and accept the fact that you got to move forward with the interest. Because if that's the case, then you're just gonna be stuck sitting at home, like, oh, I know what I gotta do. I just ain't gonna do it. Okay, let me go get the new uh, Popeyes uh, fried chicken. Oh, that was right? good too. It was delicious. I know it was good. It was delicious. I got the whole time, right? <laughs> so it's like it's really those beliefs and like get coming tomorrow. What we're gonna do? Make sure you guys are there early. Uh, what we're gonna talk about is the beliefs, how to get past those beliefs, and you know how to take it to the next level. Honestly. I mean, because everybody's meant to have success and take it to the next level and, you know, be the better version of themselves. Amen. But as far as, like, real estate and all this stuff, this is the easiest thing in the world. It just takes a little bit of money, no lie, and it takes a little hard, it takes hard work. Question, you go question, ahead, question. Go ahead. Before you go to the news, where did you Bro, I was homeless. I was living in my car. I was bathing in L.A. Fitness. Bro, I was surviving off credit cards and just trying to make it. It was 102 degree heat, just knocking on 100 doors a day to try to make it. You know what I'm saying? I just never gave up. And the next thing you know, we partnered up. We made a deal. We closed the deal for $90,000. I took $40,000. He took $40,000. We put $10,000 into the business. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, 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 don't break it down. We should have put a lot more into the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but when you had a situation where he was, he was living in his car at the time, I was transitioning from a one business to the next business. I knew nothing about real estate, nothing at all, besides, hey, go door knock foreclosures and try to bring something to the table. So before the business, uh, before like hitting it big, we was we was grinding, scraping, driving to Lancaster, California, Crazy. in the heat, in the heat, Hot. door knocking foreclosures, somebody pulling a gun out, somebody <laughs> said get off my lawn, somebody, because they're in a very distressed situation. Dude. So they don't want you knocking on the door talking about, hey, hey, can I help you out with this situation, foreclosure, this and that. We was grinding, pushing, pushing. And, and the big thing too is like this whole, the whole time when we was hustling like that, like, we was like, we was making our moves in a way that we were absent of doubt. Like, we had 100% expect, we were expecting to do, it was no way that we would not get a deal, how hard we was going. It was not low, uh, I, I hope I get it, like, there was no question. Yeah, it was no question. Matter. It was no question. It's like, if you have limp faith, you get limp results. You know, if you have strong faith, you get, you know what I'm saying, strong results. If you put in that work, you know what I'm saying, you're going to get... You get the results that you guys desire. So yeah, my question is about scaling. I kind of asked this order in there. I don't know if you guys were in there. I want to know about how do you go about uh, hiring some uh, killers to take these deals down? To, I know you could close the deal. You could close the deal. But how do you get others to come on your team to help you close the deals up and wrap them up? Because I don't want to close every deal myself. I'm in a scaling process right now. So it just depends. You scale department by department, right? And I don't like to use the word scale. I like to use the word systemize and delegate. 
so you got to figure out, hey, what do I need to delegate? What do I need to sy first systemize first? Then you want to delegate. So you want to take yourself out of certain seats and put other people in those seats. And then how do you scale? Well, instead of having one person in that position, you have two people who do the same thing and vice versa in all the other positions. Yeah, the duplicate. You duplicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to have babies. Yeah. Not them kind, though. The other kind of babies. biggest list right now? What your best list? Yo, so we've been on... Uh, we've been on uh, 50 plus absentee forever, bro. Damn, 50% oh, oh, damn. Too, you know. Killing you, it. Guys, listen, we have a free webinar we filmed, and it's the same type of raw energy, like we don't hold back. And we had a free webinar that we filmed. It's free, allyallwebinar.com. I want all of you guys to get one of these. Make sure you watch it. Come see us tomorrow. Let us know how you like it. Let us know what you thought about it. And um, I think that, you know, it's definitely going to take y'all business to the next level. It's raw. It's, sure. it's, 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 any other questions? Any so I'm going to pass these out to y'all. Any, uh, any quick questions? Any other questions? Wait, so you made a million. Yeah, but I had yeah. to deal with yeah. 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 Wait, wait, wait. My man got a question. Wait, my, my man got a question. He got a good question. Give him a good one. Yeah. Yeah. You got a question. Well, no, we have a good one. Sell it, right? She wants to sell it. Yeah. To make the million in the house that don't want to leave the house. Evict his ass. Get his ass out of there. Cash for keys. You got to. You got to. You got to. You should see the one we bust them all. You're going to fall out your seat. I told him to go by there when I get back from here. Yeah. Can you pass it down there with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I hope it would be the best way to go about talking to him or giving him a lot. Okay. So he got a squatter question, okay? So Waters. won't leave the house, right? The biggest thing in this situation is this. Number one is you're going to have to be very, very resourceful with this man, okay? You have to go over there and communicate with him in some type of way, shape, or fashion. And it's probably going to come down to money. It's probably going to come down to getting him some type of bread so he can get up out of the house. And he's probably not going to get the bread until he's actually physically out of the house. We've had a situation like that. And fortunately, at that time, we, we actually gave somebody 15 thousand dollars okay to get out of the house before it actually closed i would not recommend doing that i would not recommend doing that but when we did that we actually escorted him out of the house drove him in a car to the other side of town back at the ranch we had somebody boarding up the house so we could close the next day i would not recommend doing that because we had the budget to be able to do that but if you're trying to get him out go over there be resourceful and communicate and figure out what he needs because maybe he only needs five thousand dollars. Maybe he needs ten grand. Maybe he just needs a, a, a motel for one week. You got to figure out what this man needs, and then be able to accommodate him. And you have to be very, very resourceful. Very resourceful. I have a question. Uh, so when it comes to this, obviously we're not the first person to contact that, uh, you know, that homeowner. Yeah. So how can we get far away most possible? I guess from. Uh, so you know that list being so saturated that you're not the first person. To how, you call, how are you contacting? Cold calling. Yeah, through cold calling. Yeah, okay, so cold, cold calling situation, right? He's saying, hey, look, I'm calling a list that has been called a multitude of times, right? Yeah. So it's very so you may be in a saturated market. I live, maybe I live in Houston. You live in Houston, right? And I think every at this point every market is saturated. I live in California. I live in LA. We do deals in LA. We do deals in Central, Northern California, you know, Southern California, all over the place, right? On a marketing page. The biggest thing with a seller is be different than everybody else. Diddy talked about it today, okay? Um, being a little bit different than everybody else, right? You got to change up your approach and change up the way you're communicating with them on the phone and take the pressure away from off of, hey, are you looking to sell? And then talk about, talk about in some type of way, shape, or form, something other than that. Yes. Now, if it's on the initial call, very difficult to do that. But if it's on a follow-up, easy to do that. Hey, Miss Jones, I was reaching back out to you. How are you today? Oh, good, 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 man. I was just in your area. I wanted to give you a call. You were on my mind. I couldn't stop thinking about our conversation uh, three, four, five, six weeks ago. How are you? How's everything going? How's this? How's that? Separate yourself from all the other investors that are doing the exact same thing. I had, right? But if I communicate with this gentleman, right? We had a good conversation, but he's not ready. What stops me from, from handwriting a letter? Hey, 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 John, had a great conversation with you. Uh, you know, last weekend, wanted to give you a handwritten letter with my business card, contact me, wanted to follow, whatever it is. Separate yourself from everybody else that's doing the exact same thing. But if it's on the initial call, very difficult to do that because it's a cold call, straight up. But if it's on the, if it's on the acquisition side or follow-up side, easy to do it. So excuse me, one, let me, let me. One more, follow-up question. Uh, follow-up, so the initial question, so like you're saying, if it's the initial call and they already said, oh yeah, it's uh, a lot of them, they already contacted me, so, you know, what's your offer? How do you go about, you know, uh, following up? So, so role play, 
it's role play. Yeah, so you gotta roll so with I'm, it. So I'm calling you. You're the seller, right? I'm yeah. calling. Okay, hi, Mr. Seller. How are you doing? You know, um, let's just skip to okay. So how much will you take for your property? Oh, well, I already received uh, multiple, uh, multiple offers. Okay. So, you know, what's your offer? Um, you know, what's your highest and best offer? Okay. You, know, you get what I'm saying? So how would I go about? So, spending? so I'm gonna tell you guys two ways to approach this. Number, the first way, first thing you gotta think about when this situation happens is you do not have enough leads. Exactly. Okay? You don't have enough leads. Okay. Because you cannot force somebody to sell their property. Exactly. It sounds like it ain't that hot. Yeah. Okay? If somebody's talking like that, you don't have enough leads. I tell all of our team, you're emotionally invested, but you're never emotionally attached to any given lead, to any given contract. That's right. Because if I have five contracts and one of them falls away, that's one fifth of my inventory, right? Yeah. Right? But if you have you have 20 on the board and one falls away, it's one out of 20, not one out of five, right? Right. So you have to generate more leads. Second thing, is you're gonna to have to separate yourself and say, hey, look, that's so, so you must not be, you know, you, you, you know, those offers may not have, you know, how much are you looking to get, right? What price did you have in mind? You, you've been contacted by multiple different investors. You have a ballpark or range of price that you were thinking about. Right. So I can see if I can come anywhere near that particular price. I'd love to work with you. I'd love to get it done. I'd love to accommodate you. I'd love to, you know, share with you how we can get this done quickly. What price did you particularly have in mind? Perfect. And Perfect. then try and get them, they're gonna stay a price and then get them off the price and go to rapport building. Great. And Great. where did you come up with that price, Mr. Seller? No, I, I, I asked 50 questions. But I asked so that, many that, questions that, that they're that not gonna just back, back, back up off that. Like a lead generation challenge, not necessarily a hey, what kind of because what magical line can I give you to overcome that? Yeah. It's because they're not really that motivated, or exactly. really, yeah, I think that's what it is, right? Okay. It's just a lead gun problem, but put them in podio, follow up with them. Hey, Mr. Sells, give you a call back. I wanted to see if you were still looking at I know last time we talked, your price was this. I wanted to see if anything has changed because I have a big appetite. We just got an influx of funds, I'd love to get it done before the end of 2019, right? right. Okay. Exactly, right. sense of urgency. Hey, guys, anybody have any more questions? Yeah, question Bottlenecks. Um, I kind of share the same situation, like a lot of turnover. Um, some of it is people who, like I've, I've given training, you know, we role play. Turnover with employees? Turnover with, yeah, acquisitions guys, whether it's, like I live in SoCal too, but I only do it in the Are they West. in-house? What? Are your acquisition people in-house? They're on, in the market. Are they in your office? No, no. In the market, virtual. They're in, they're in the market, boots on the ground, acquisitions guys who've been in, you know, and I feel like how many do you have? In each market, just one guy. How many chart. markets? How many people? Uh, oh. Four different markets. You know the one thing that's crazy, cause look, man, like real talk. What's your name? Adrian. So Adrian, we have one acquisition manager, a girl. She's a beast, and you know, we honestly we were rolling with one list type, one acquisition manager, and one marketing strategy for the longest. We don't have four acquisition managers. No, I mean like acquisitionists, people who their main job is the negotiations from their level of knowledge. You know, like they've been, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you gotta you gotta stand no, that down. Yeah, but so yeah. one, you should trim it up a little bit so you can yeah. put all your concentration into one person and then build that person up. And they don't have to be in those markets, but I would recommend that they be close to you. Because if you do, you have the sales skills. Like, are you the sales guy? Do you have all that knowledge? I do. Like, I tried to shift back to just being the head of marketing. So what you I would suggest, because I think that's smart. Now you're just work, you're not working in the business, you're working on the that business. That was what you I was trying to, be to a do. Birds, right? Which is smart. The challenge is, I think that it'd be smarter if you, I'd suggest, bro, if you like bring in somebody who lives, where do you live? Cerritos. Cerritos. So yeah, man, you could find somebody. Bring in no, somebody. Bro, bring office. in somebody who lives in Cerritos. Go get a small office, or maybe you guys meet up at Starbucks three times yeah. a week, right? Where you face to face, you could, Belly to belly, you could, you know what I'm saying, pour into those people, all your sales skills that you have, give it to them, get them, get them on a sales train and make sure they're good to go, hold them accountable, right? And then you're not going to have any turnover because you're pouring into that person. No, I had one guy actually, um, he lived in Pasadena, uh -huh. and I did, I poured into him, we did like in person, and now he's going off to start his own business, like I give him all the Well, that's normal, yeah, that's yeah. going to no, happen. I'm saying that's, that's normal. Actually, yeah. Nothing like, new there. How do you do Look, the screening How much were you paying? I mean, I mean, I mean, what was it, were you guys not getting, because I mean, honestly, like, we treat our people so good and we pay them so well, like they would never want to go anywhere. But that's like something like that is something that you cannot control. I believe yeah. in control, the controllables, and somebody wanting to start their own business is something that you cannot control. Can't what I would it. suggest to do is if it ain't broken, then don't fix it, right? Sure. So replace that particular person, bleed into them, make them, you know, more than just a, a quote unquote employee, and, you know, empower them, train them coach them, mentor them, 
and then you know that likelihood of that happening again is very very low that's just somebody who's saying hey look i want to go and do my own thing control the controllables and it sounds like if that person did not go do their own thing they probably would have worked out so go find somebody else from Pasadena. I'm from Pasadena. Go find somebody else from Pasadena and make them your acquisition manager. And I would suggest in screen? person. Do you, do you have a fear too that if you hire somebody else, they're gonna run and steal your business? You just waste your time. No, no. I feel like with the younger people, because I'm 22, but I know my mindset, right? Like I don't want to ever go back to work for someone else. But like, that's kind of like young people. They'll learn really fast, right? Like they'll see people. But then at the same time, I feel like I'm running the risk of that. They're using me as a launch pad and then they're Young going people? you know what I mean like that's what I felt but do you have the fear times. that you feel like if you bring somebody into the business that they're going to run away with your business and then you just waste your time sometimes yeah, yeah. so yeah. the challenge is the belief